Hi, welcome to this brand new podcast called Take It Easy with Dr. Sean Powell. It's kind of like just chilling out, kicking back, relaxing, talking about all things health and wellness because prevention is the cure. Hi, and welcome to my fourth episode in this Take It Easy with Dr. Sean Powell series. And I'm so excited that you're joining me again. I really appreciate all the help and support and all your comments. Your subscriptions have meant so much to me, so thank you so much. And welcome to this episode entitled, Why Brown People Have the Worst Genes in the World Ever. Wow, what a title, Brown People. I should mention at the beginning of the show that I am a British-born Indian, so I classify myself as a brown person. And brown people essentially are South Asian people. Those are people from the sub-Indian continent. So in this podcast, I will introduce South Asian people, what I mean by it. Then I'll talk about the medical reasons, why we may have worse genes, as well as cultural reasons, societal reasons. We'll come up with a conclusion at the end. And then, of course, we'll have my wonderful thought of the week, which I've got a great feedback from a lot of people. So thank you. So who are brown people? It's also known in the medical term as South Asian people. These are people from the sub-Asian or sub-Indian continent. And there are a variety of sub-South Asian people. They include people from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladeshis, Nepalese, even Bhutan and Maldives. They are classified as South Asians. And what is so special about being South Asian? Well, studies have shown that there is heart diseases four times higher in patients or people of South Asian origin. Four times higher. Think about that. That's a crazy number. So if you're Caucasian or Afro-Caribbean, your risk of heart disease is a lot lower. There is also an interesting study or studies that have shown that heart disease is the most common form of death for South Asian people. And if you think about it, You probably have a first degree relative, that is someone such as an uncle or auntie, a family member, who have potentially suffered a heart attack and unfortunately died from it. Why is that occurring? I'm going to be going through these topics about why there are factors that contribute to heart disease, particularly for South Asian people. But what's interesting to note, that even within the South Asian group, there are major differences in risk factors. So... The Bangladeshi community or population have the highest risk of heart disease, then followed by Pakistanis and then Indians, and then you have Sri Lankans. So it's interesting to note that even within the sub-Asian community, there are differences in risk factors. And South Asian population represents around 20 to 25% of the whole world population. So this is actually a major world health problem. So I am going to tell you a very interesting story. So imagine you have a friend whose name is Amit or Tony and they went to university, they enjoyed themselves, they could have went out partied, had good food, had a good life, drunk alcohol, had late night kebabs or whatever they're into and then they work, start working, then they suddenly start feeling a bit funny, they may get a bit faint or they may just something doesn't feel quite right. They go to their doctor and the doctor checks their blood and they say, oh, you've got type 2 diabetes. Tony would be like, hold on, how can I have type 2 diabetes? Well, unfortunately, this actually is happening. It's not a myth. And sadly, it is becoming an increasing reality that patients who are in their 20s are getting heart attacks and getting strokes as well in their 30s. How can that be possible? Well, With type 2 diabetes, it's often a silent condition. Diagnosis may come many years after onset, when blood sugar levels have been unstable for some time and already caused harm to the body. So why am I particularly singling out South Asian people? Unfortunately, being South Asian, we have a tendency for something called central obesity. Oh my God, you said the O word, Rishi. Yes, central obesity. That is fat around the middle or around the stomach. And this fat around the stomach may not look that 
wonderful, but the most important aspect is it tends to cause a triad of metabolic, we call it metabolic syndrome, causes type 2 diabetes, hypertension and heart disease. I often describe it as a lemon on sticks. If you think about a nice juicy lemon, it's round, then you've got sticks for the legs, sticks for the arms. A lot of South Asian men particularly have a lemon on stick sort of body. So when they develop fat, the fat isn't around anywhere else but apart from their belly. And in fact, I have a bit of fat around my belly. My body fat is currently around is 15.5% and I don't have fat anywhere else apart from my belly. And 15.5% isn't that much, but I want to reduce that risk. Of course, naturally reducing that risk I also want to look aesthetically nicer too. So that's also quite an ego thing, but hey, I'm cool and honest with that. So one of the primary reasons why we have tend to have central obesity is unfortunately or fortunately because of our wonderful food. Yes, South Asian food is incredibly wonderful and lovely. In fact, it's the most popular, curries are the most popular dish in the whole of the UK. Everyone loves a curry. Everyone loves Indian food or South Asian food because it's so tasty and glorious. I'm not having a go at South Asian food. In fact, South Asian food per se is actually not unhealthy. You've got lentils, you've got veg vegetables, you've got really good variety of many different diverse foodstuffs. But the problem is primarily, if you think about the food that we have as Indians, it generally tends to be fried food. So you fry a pakora, you fry a samosa, hey, you fry pretty much anything. And the problem with having fried foods are they have higher calories, which means that the weight has to be stored somewhere as you're not burning it so much, which means you gain fat around different parts of your body, hence you gain weight. The other problem is a lot of South Asians cook with ghee. And ghee has a lot of saturated fats. Saturated fats are the bad cholesterol. They tend to cause something called atherosclerosis, which are fatty deposits that are found in arteries. And these tend to cause, if they get too much and they block an artery, it can cause heart attacks, potentially strokes. So it's important that we try and reduce the amount of ghee or saturated fats and fried foods that we have. The other problem is that South Asian food also loves dairy and we have high fat dairy foods. Think about it. I mean, I love, I love lussies. Like, <laughs> I can't tell you how much I love sweet lussies. Hey, I love mango lussies. But these kind of drinks have a lot of fat and sugar in them. So though this is another problem. And on top of that, Indians and South Asian people tend to love this one thing that we all tend to do salt i can <laughs> i can remember my father in fact i remember still my father has some food and he mum cooks it with lovely kind of spices and puts a bit of salt in it and dad's like oh i've got to make it taste even stronger so he puts even more salt on it i'm like wow dad more salt and we tend to do that we tend to put salt and he actually uses black salt which is really quite smelly but hey it tastes good and the problem with salt is it causes an increase in blood pressure which causes an increased risk of heart disease or cardiovascular disease so it's very important that i'm going to come to address this but if you think about it in total indian food fried ghee salt this is not a very healthy combination then we're going to talk about culture South Asian communities have great culture. There's a great thing about being connected and getting to know family and having large gatherings. Think about it. You go to a wedding. Maybe you go to someone's birthday. You have family functions. And they're wonderful because you get to meet all these people. But danger. There's a big danger. And that is all those foods that are around you. That you think, oh, you know, I can just have a bit of this, a bit of that. And we tend to graze easily. And we don't realize how many calories we're putting on by eating all these foods, which are super tasty, but also highly calorific. And of course, you can't be rude to auntie or uncle and go, oh no, no, 
I don't really feel like having this food because it's too fattening. I can't do it. <laughs> no way. Because culturally, it's quite offensive or rude to turn down food someone has prepared for you. The other issue is that in some cultures, smoking and tobacco chewing is higher. For example, in the Bangladeshi community, they tend to have a lot of smoking and tobacco, as well as shisha smoking is very popular. And, you know, a lot of my friends do it and they go out and they socialize and have shisha together. They think it's quite cool, which is, I suppose, socially quite acceptable to catch up with your friends. But you're not you're not drinking alcohol. But the problem is people don't realize that flavored shisha is tobacco based and tobacco based shisha tends to cause an increased risk of heart disease. OK, Rishi or Dr. Shompa, you're telling me to stop having all these foods and just what you don't want me to even enjoy my life. No, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is it's important not to ban any type of foods, but to realize that these foods are luxury items that should be enjoyed rarely. But when they are really chew, chew the food, really appreciate the food around you. We call it mindful eating. I'll come to that in another topic, but really appreciate the food you're having. What is a healthy item that can be enjoyed regularly and shouldn't be seen as a punishment or anything like that. So dietary changes shouldn't be viewed as punishments. And we should also be conscious of having of our portion sizes and preparation methods. So for example, rather than using ghee, use olive oil, rapeseed oil, anything else that be more productive. And of course, don't put salt in your food or extra salt, should we say. I've explained some of the reasons why South Asians tend to have fat around their belly or heart disease tends to be higher. But why is it a bother if you have fat around your belly? Well, scientifically, central obesity tends to cause an increased level of insulin resistance. What that means is the body needs to produce more insulin when you eat food. And what that entails is it needs to stabilize your blood sugar levels because our body is working in something called homeostasis. Our body is an incredible machine. It tends to keep everything in balance. What happens is you have an excess sugar amount. So imagine you're at a nice Indian function or South Asian function. You're hanging out with your friends and there's some wonderful jalebis or gulab jamuns. And so the body has to release more insulin for people of South Asian origin to stabilize your blood sugar levels. But what that does is it makes the pancreas almost like worn out. So you're using that more and more. And that puts you or myself at increased risk of type 2 diabetes. There are also other factors such as endothelial dysfunction, which is damage to the lining of cells, which also puts us at risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease. But I'm not going to go into this in this podcast because there's a lot to talk about. There is an interesting study actually which is being conducted called the Masala study. Yes, Masala. M-A-S-A-L-A. -A -A. Very sexy and quite appropriate title. But it doesn't the name is not as sexy as it sounds. It's essentially meditators of atherosclerosis in South Asians living in America. Uh, what it's doing is it's following around 900 South Asians living in the Chicago and Bay Area in America. And it's looking at their risk factors and how they develop all sorts of medical problems. And what they found is that South Asian people have tended to develop high blood, higher blood pressure, high triglycerides, which are fats, abnormal cholesterol and type 2 diabetes at lower body weights. So even if we think our body weight is normal, that is actually not technically correct, given the fact we're South Asian. And there has been a discussion about whether we need to have a different body scale for South Asians, which I'm not going to get into again in this podcast, potentially another podcast, but not this one. They also found an interesting thing that men were prone to higher levels of coronary artery calcium. What that means is that that's the amount of calcium within the heart blood vessels. And the higher calcium is a marker of atherosclerosis which is a predictor of future heart attacks and strokes. And what I found, which is the most important thing, was that they did CT scans, which are scans of different parts of the body. And they, they found that South Asians had a greater tendency to store body fat 
in places they shouldn't. That's terrible, right? Places they shouldn't. So even if someone looks relatively healthy, internally they had fat around different organs, not only the abdomen, but also the liver and muscles. And fat stored here is known as visceral fat. And this visceral fat is a cause of greater metabolic damage, thus putting us again at risk or more risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease. So yes, they also found an, in an interesting thing about diets. South Asians who stayed with their traditional Indian or South Asian diets loved and kind of consumed fried fatty foods and they were also at higher risk of cardiovascular disease. But what was very interesting was that those people in the Chicago area that embraced Western diets were also at the same risk of developing cardiovascular disease. That is red and processed meats, alcohol, refined carbs and less or few fruits. So what I am advocating is that the best diet we can have is something called a prudent diet. That is to have more fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans and whole grains. An interesting study also found that there another issue for South Asians is time delay. Studies have actually shown that South Asians were less likely to get the right and proper care promptly. For example, they wait longer before seeing a specialist and they are less likely to receive diagnostic and interventional services at the appropriate time. There are complex reasons for this, which I won't go into at the moment, but it's important to recognize that fact. So if you're worried about heart disease or diabetes, you should generally go to your GP or a doctor and get these things checked out because the sooner you can do it, the better it is because prevention is the cure. And now we're going to talk about COVID-19 in relation to South Asians. South Asians have been found to have a three times more likely risk of having serious consequences from coronavirus. And there was an observational study in the UK which found that South Asians died 12 years younger on average than the white population. 60 years versus 72 years. They also found that British South Asians were less likely to have non-asthmatic lung disease and obesity than the white population, but more likely to have, to, to have diabetes. That was 40% compared to 25%. And diabetes does seem to be a risk factor for COVID-19. The study in the UK looked from February the 6th to May the 8th, and they followed up patients on May the 22nd. However, this has not been peer reviewed or published in a medical journal. However, it is interesting to note that specific ethnic groups, including South Asians, had higher rates of comorbidities such as hypertension, diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And these have been associated with severe disease and mortality in COVID-19. A lot of questions I get asked from my friends and patients are, oh, it must be vitamin D. Vitamin D is a problem. The fact we have low vitamin D obviously means that we're more at risk of COVID-19. But a systemic review in The Lancet in June 2020 found there was no evidence that low vitamin D levels correlated with having a higher risk of COVID-19. And it doesn't really explain the ethnic varieties between different patients. But there, but there are other factors involved, such as health inequalities and so on. So, in conclusion, do Asians really have the worst genes ever? In a way, yes, we do. But I also think it's important that we don't reject our culture, but embrace it in a way that works in a healthy way. So what I'm trying to say is that, yes, it's fine to have South Asian food, but it's important to incorporate portion sizes, restrictions, as well as adapting more healthier habits, as well as incorporating exercise and lifestyle changes in an integral part of our life. Hence why I created Dr. Sean Powell. These are small tips that I provide you to help you to become healthier and happier and live longer. So who wants to not live longer? Of course, we all want to. So what are Dr. Sean Powell's take it easy top tips? 
Then the first tip is to remove that central fat, that wonderful belly that we tend to develop being South Asian. Number one, diet. Limit your sugary foods. Those tasty, wonderful foods like halva, gulab jamun, puddings, jalebi, barfi, ras malai. Limit them and make them a luxury food. That means only have them on rare occasions and try and substitute them for healthier snacks. For example, naan bread tends to be quite bulky. Also can push up your calories. But look for lighter foods such as poppadoms instead of naan. Another thing, unfortunately, is to drink fewer sugary beverages. Avoid juice, sweet lassi, sweet tea or coffee. Also, coconut water is highly nutritious because it contains many min minerals, but it also is high in sugar. So it's best to drink this after an intense workout. Another tip is to choose whole grains. That means include unrefined, healthy grains such as brown rice, wild rice, sprouted brown rice, instead of the general white rice that we all tend to have. In fact, if it's not basmati rice, it's not worth it, right? And speaking of rice, it's also important to not rinse your grains. What we tend to do, and even I do it, is I get some rice, soak it in water, take some cold water, rinse it, and rinse out the rinse it out, take some more cold water, essentially get the starch out. But what studies have found is that if you do that, what you're doing is removing the enriched vitamins. And actually rinsing doesn't remove any extra starch. So my suggestion is, if you're going to cook brown rice, wild rice, sprouted brown rice, don't rinse your grains. Lastly, in terms of diet, make meals a family tradition. As South Asians, we are very vibrant in our culture and very close to our families. And it's a great thing. Family meals help each of us accept new food habits, learn social skills and establish good structure. We're also able to eat on a regular schedule basis. That means we don't miss meals because if we missed meals, it would lead to overeating, poor choices and difficulty listening to internal cues of hunger and fullness. And like I said before, practice mindful eating. Secondly, education. I'm a really be firm believer in education creating huge change. Hence why I wanted to create this podcast. I think changing one person at a time is a great thing, but I'm kind of like a one-to-many one model. So I previously did talks to elderly South Asian people about diet and specifically about the risks of heart disease and diabetes. And it really made a big difference in their lives. Then I followed it up and helped them again. So I really believe if you guys can share this podcast on YouTube, tell your parents, your grandparents, to really listen to this. And I would love any feedback, comments, questions. The more that we can educate South Asians and even doctors and other people listening, the better it is. Because as doctors, we tend to kind of listen to things in boxes. But if doctors or any healthcare professionals can listen to it, it'll be a great and huge difference to South Asians. And lastly, exercise. Some studies suggest South Asians, particularly women, no sexism involved at all, tend to exercise less. And they can be because of cultural reasons, potential fear. Maybe it's not the case for you, but it can be for some people. So you can go to same-sex gyms, uh, potentially do exercise in your home on YouTube. And I'll be creating some YouTube videos about this. But it's important to build activity into your daily routine. For example, 10,000 steps, which I mentioned in an earlier podcast, is a great thing. I was going to go to the gym at my friend's place. Normally, I would drive my car there. But because I had this app in terms of how many steps I did or do a day, I thought, you know what, I'll go and walk there. So incorporating these things is an important and essential part, particularly being South Asian. We really need to address these issues. So in conclusion, yes, South Asians do have the worst genes, I believe, in the world because it puts us at increased risk of diabetes, heart disease, strokes. But I also think it's important to not punish ourselves, but to embrace the culture and incorporate healthy habits into our own individual lifestyles. 
Thank you so much for listening. I truly appreciate all your support, but it would make a big, big difference to me and to if you could subscribe, like this video, definitely check out the YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to it. It's on Instagram and Facebook, but I'm really trying to push the Facebook and YouTube because I think it's a real important impact that we can make in society. Just go to youtube.com forward slash Dr. Take It Easy. That's D-O-C-T-O-R, Take It Easy. And I will see you same time, same place next week. But before I go, how can I forget my wonderful thought of the week? Here we go. Oh, yeah. And it is by Albert Einstein. The world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. I'll say that again. The world as we, as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. Thank you so much again, and I really appreciate your help. I produce podcasts every week, and it will be coming out on a Tuesday. So stay tuned, same time, same place. And please spread the word, like, subscribe on Spotify, Facebook, Instagram. And as always, I will see you same time, same place next week. Take it easy. <laughs>